Hello and welcome to a first look of Vampire Survivors. Uh, yeah, this game, you've probably heard of this one, has been popping off for the last few weeks. This game is made by, I believe, one dude. I'm gonna pull up the store page real quick. It's like, this game reminds me a lot of Loop Hero, which it has a very similar art style. And just kind of popped up and took over for a week or two. It's pretty fun. I wanted to give you a video to bring it to your attention, talk about what I feel. I think that this is a game that some people are going to get, like, an extremely large amount of time out of, and some people, like me, are not. This is the sort of game that I play for, like, three or four hours, and I'm happy. But that's fine, because this game is $3 on Steam right now, so... The barrier to entry is very low. The game is an early access, and from what I understand, the developer has been updating very frequently like every week or so so definitely worth taking a look at and checking out i'll go over the options real quick with you as i tend to do pretty uh pretty minimal sound slider music slider english slider <laughs> <laughs> this is the option to turn off flashing visual effects which i will do for uh for this video but there is also a photosensitivity warning at the start of the game so be wary of that uh, it's, uh, you'll see how it works. I, actually, what I'm going to do for this one is I'm just going to play a run, and then I'm going to leave and show you all the meta stuff afterwards. So let's just jump right in. Four characters, you pay the currency that you get for doing runs to unlock the characters. I'm going to play as Antonio. He's the regular dude. Starts with a whip. Each character starts with a different weapon. And they have a little different passive effect, so Antonio, every 10 levels, gets 10% more damage. So the controls are very shocking. It's a very jarring game when I started it for the first time. All you do is move. All, all you do is move. You just walk around. Your attacks are all automatic. So this guy's starting weapon is this whip, which hits the direction he's facing and does damage. And then the game is about the different weapons that you pick up and using them. Whoa, that was kind of loud. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, and then when you, you pick up those little orbs, you get experience. When the bar fills up, you level up. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. I'm down to grab X. There's passives and then there's actives. The axe that I just got is... Uh, X that I just got is a new weapon, which you'll see. You just throw it up and it falls down. There's a pretty decent number of weapons. From my uh, estimation, I've found and seen and played with, like... And maybe at this point, it's like whip, axe, there's two magic wands, there's the project, the like, the bouncy projectile, there's a lot of them. And that's part of the, part of the gameplay is checking it out for yourself. So, you know, the early game is pretty basic as well, there's not a whole lot to do, I one-shot all the enemies. It's fine. It, the game becomes pretty much about, uh, managing the enemies more or less, and managing your position in relation to them as more enemies begin to spawn. And just being smart with your movement, pretty much. You can also break projectiles. One thing one thing that I... Or not break projectiles, but break, like, the stuff on the ground and it drops things for you. Drop, like, those little torches that I just broke. So far, my strategy has been to let a bunch of enemies spawn and kind of... Oh my god, it's like a jump scare every time. Let's try upgrading the axe. So, uh, quick aside... Your weapons, you, when you level up, you'll either get a passive option, a, a new weapon to fire, or uh, an upgrade to the weapon. So let's upgrade our axe to level 2, and now it shoots two projectiles instead of one. So yeah, generally my, my strategy is going to be bunch all the enemies up and kill stragglers, like kill the ones that are spawning when I can, and then let the majority of them form into this ball, and then kill them all with AoE. And while I'm walking around, I'll just kind of go back and pick up the experience that I left. I'm definitely no professional, I'm no expert in a game like this, but, you know, that's how I've been going about it. There's also a decent amount of meta progression. There's a few unlocks that I'll show you. Uh, after the run, you spend the money that we've been accumulating to get those unlocks. A big bat swarm flying by, careful. And then, as time goes on, there's like little bosses. I, I don't know if they're necessarily bosses, but there's like stronger and stronger enemies that spawn, things like that. Uh, your health bar, I haven't, I don't have like a quantifiable number of how much health I have, but I do have a red bar underneath me. 
health does not regenerate naturally, but there are pickups that'll drop that'll give you health back, as you can probably guess. Uh, let's take base damage of the axe up by 20. Make this thing do big damage. Trying to time my whip so I like turn when I'm about to swing it, but this is this is the axe show. The whip's mostly here to clear the path while I walk forward. How much money is that getting? Ten? Not bad. Imagine if these axes pierce more. I'm gonna get my mouse cursor off the screen. I don't think I need to be clicking on anything. But yeah, my my current build and my current strategy. I want to be above or below the enemies primarily. I started auto playing a YouTube video. Get out of here, mouse cursor. You guys see that new YouTube feature, by the way? Quick, quick aside. You see that shit where you can like hover over a video and it starts playing it? It's really weird, because it plays it without sound. And then I go to watch the video and YouTube's like, hey, you want to pick up where you left off, right? And I'm like, no, bitch, I didn't hear any of this. Hello? What is this? It's an extremely strange feature. I don't, I don't really like it. Here's, here's some of the passives, by the way. Spinach, raise inflicted damage by 10%, or attract orb. I'm down to pick up objects from further away. And the game goes, I believe there is no win state. I think it goes forever. And so you can see in the top left, there's a limited number of passive and uh, active slots that you can utilize. Also, some enemies drop these treasures. I think it might be like the powered up bats drop them. This gives you money and then you get a random upgrade based on what the wheel spins on. So like here, I got 65 gold and I got an upgrade to my attract orb. It seems to upgrade one of your existing... Uh, weapons to the next level. Like, my attract orb is now level, uh, level, level 2. And let's keep going on... Actually, no, whip level 2 is good because it fires behind you. Yeah, I'm gonna try and finish. I want to see if this blue outline bat drops me another one of those, uh, chests. Because that's been my hypothesis, is these blue outline bats are, like, mini-bosses that I need to be killing. Not killing them has been a hindrance overall. He is a little bit in there. And enemy patterns seem to be pretty set, like around four minutes these ghosty boys start spawning. I don't believe it's based on level, I do believe it's based on your time, which you can see in the top. Or when new enemies begin to spawn. I'm just gonna keep kinda, I'm gonna keep kiting. And keep it moving here. Pardon me. Excuse me. And then the different enemies, of course, have different patterns, like the ghosts are faster but much weaker, skeletons are sturdier but much slower, things like that. There's some big bosses like the Praying Mantis that we'll probably see. It, I'm aiming to just play this for about 10 minutes, primarily because I have to go to class in 20 minutes, so I need to go get ready after this, but, you know. For me personally, I do think this game is good, and I think that it's cool I'm, I'm covering it, because uh, I, I think it's neat. Also, mouse cursor on the screen again. Freaking guy. Mm, give me give me armor. One one reduced damage. Okay, at five minutes it looks like we get put in the freaking Thunderdome with the Praying Mantis, and these green spinach ghouls start spawning. I have been having to click on things, so the mouse cursor is not that big of a deal. But yeah, this is not a game that I see myself playing for an extremely long amount of time, because at the end of the day, it is just about your movement, and... I don't know. You, oh, and I'm just gonna die, actually. Yeah, there you go, five minutes. Yeah, I tried to cut it a little close there, but that's okay. I'll, go, I'll take it out now, and you can see unlocks, and then we'll do one more quick one. Find an Orologian. Find five floor chickens. So you get unlocks at the end of your levels. You get a stat screen, so Mad Forest, normal, gold times one. You can see which weapons did the most damage, how much time you had each of them active, how much damage per second they did, level, enemies defeated, all of that stuff. And then if we go out here and go take a look at the collection, here's all of the stuff that I've unlocked, and you can see what I haven't unlocked as well. I think these are pickups, yeah, increase experience, add money, add money, add money. And then there's a luck stat that you can work with. And then uh, you can spend your money on the new characters. Like I haven't unlocked Gennaro, but he's uh, $600. Or you can go in here and you can do power-ups. And you can see the cost down here is 660 for armor, max health plus 10% per rank up to 30%, things like that. 
Let's recover 0.1 HP per rank. Ah, oh, that seems good. We'll take a passive passive health increase. 0.1 HP per rank or 0.1 HP per second is infinitely more than 0 HP per second. Chance to get lucky up by 10%, things like that. 10% more coins. Ah, so this is what you would want to upgrade if you want to get through the meta progression quickly. I don't. Let's do one more. I'll do a different character here so you can see. I do. I, I played a run with Imelda and I did not like this character, but we can try her again. 10% more experience every five levels. He starts with the magic wand, which shoots a little projectile at an enemy. I think that well, what happened to me was I ended up with only this weapon and it got very uh, slow. It was very slow. And I didn't kill anything and I went, damn, this sucks. Now I'm not gonna learn my lesson, I'm just gonna upgrade the magic wand to level 2, get an extra projectile, and uh, blank. And use my blank. Damn, what the fuck, this game sucks, it's so slow. This, this is just not my favorite weapon as well. And you're gonna develop preferences when you play a game like this, it's part of the, part of the charm, right? Everyone enjoys different styles. I do, I feel like this game is going to come down pretty heavily to figuring out what build makes sense to do. Like figuring out what you want to focus for your build and just optimizing it. Let's try Santa Water. Generates damaging zones. Maybe you probably make a little circle on the ground yeah, and then you kite the enemies into it. Oh, it does not last very long. Seems like an upgrade that'll be a lot better uh, when there's more enemies on the screen. I want to follow my hypothesis that these blue bats are bosses and I want to try to focus it down. Let's see if I get a drop every time. Because that seems pretty important if that's true, that this blue bat is a boss, because I've been ignoring them pretty much. But he has a lot of health. Takes a very long time to kill. There it is. Yeah, so it seems like the blue bat does indeed signify a boss. I'm just gonna keep- I'm gonna move my mouse cursor around. You're, you're gonna have to deal with it. Sorry, but also not that sorry about it. Give me that treasure chest, baby. Give me in there. What I should do is I should kite the enemies away from it and come back, but... Uh... You can't make me. This is the thing. You- you can't make me. Although I am doing that, so I guess you can make me. Let's try going in on the- on the Santa water. Extra projectile, bigger zone. Seems good. And we'll take our random upgrade. Oh! I think the attractor orb is good. In my experience in games like this, further pickup range is pretty good. Like Nuclear Throne, I remember loving Plutonium Hunger, for example. Increased pickup range on all... Uh, I think it was just rads, but it might have been everything in that game. The game does have a pretty good Nuclear Throne vibe. Too. Not exactly the same, but still. I didn't read what that shit did. I was thinking about plutonium hunger. I don't have to do anything with the Santa water, though. Because, like, it's definitely not something where I can kite enemies and do it very well. Yeah, I should probably keep moving, though. I was watching those bats die. Couldn't keep moving. Salivating. Look at these idiots. Oh, no, I'm the idiot. <laughs> Oh, look at these idiots flying into my holy water. Oh, God. Oh, shit. They didn't all die. I am the fool. Okay. I'm gonna go all in on this Santa water. Let it rain down. Oh, yeah, we're at two and a half minutes, so I don't have... A, I'm like, I'm making pretty good experience in terms of... Ex uh, pretty good progress in terms of experience, is what I mean to say. I don't know my rates for sure, but I'm usually getting to around... Uh, I feel like I feel like I'm leveling up a little slower than I should be typically, and it's definitely a me problem in the way that I'm playing the game. Because the enemies will start to outpace you, I feel. Kind of like the point of the game. I end at three minutes, another boss bat spawns. Is it like every two minutes after the first minute, maybe? It's probably just a general rule of thumb that every minute new stuff starts spawning. Right, and I get this bat focus fired. He's got this holy water landing on him, and it looks like it's landing on the outside of the screen a little bit. Like, it, it's hitting a little further than I could see. Take Santa water. Keep the upgrades running. Uh, other, other interesting notes about this game, this is a windowed game, and I looked and it did not appear to have a full screen mode. So, you know, probably not a big deal breaker, but uh, it's 
to be aware. As far as I'm aware as well, this is only on Steam. However, I didn't check. I, I haven't been checking lately. I should be, but it's like a general rule of thumb for I've, I've found anyway. I think that other bat died and just dropped a big XP drop. 7% more max or 7% more experience? Sure. I like leveling. I'm liking this water build a lot though. This is like orbital strike bombarding these skeletons. The skeletons thought they ruled the world until I pulled in the holy water orbital laser beams. Called in the artillery. I was in control the whole time. I think the ghost might give me a little trouble. Let me get the cooldown reduction on my magic wand. So generally speaking right now, it looks like my plan is the holy water do a bulk of the work and then enemies that are fast and, and light will get picked off by my magic wand. Yeah, I think that you could spend a lot of time theory crafting and trying to figure out what the optimal build is. And if that's what you enjoy, dude, this game's gonna be sick for you. Because there's a lot, there's new weapons coming out all the time from what I understand. Developers doing updates non-stop, so... Probably a whole lot of value to be had in terms of the theory crafting meta. Which is great, if that's for you. I'm... I'm not a big theory crafter. Sometimes I'll go like, ooh, here's a fun idea, but... Usually, I just like to play whatever I get shown is my more my style. Ah, uh, it's time to be put in the Thunderdome. Today, I think I will not die in the Thunderdome instead of dying in the Thunderdome. So many times putting Seraph in the Thunderdome, they put me in the Thunderdome. It sucks. Let's get a magic wand upgrade to level 3 or level 4. There's a praying mantis in here, isn't there? Somewhere? Yeah, yeah there he is. Like the enemies, the enemies spawn outside of the flowers and then they push them in, which is really strange to me. I have no idea how much health this praying mantis has, but it seems like the flowers despawn after 30 seconds. So you spend 30 seconds in the Thunderdome fighting it out, and then you're free to go. Going for this treasure chest was a little, uh, a little suspicious, I would say. New holy water upgrade, though. This is a pretty pretty good number, level 6. There's one more projectile plus another 20%. Dude, it's raining down. Are you guys sure you want to face me? There's a health pickup, by the way. They're in the little fire things, from what I can tell. But they only seem to drop the health pickups when you actually need them. So I've been not breaking them until I need health. <laughs> I, I, well, I really... I was not a big fan of Santa Water the first time I used it, but this fucking... Orbital bombardment shit is pretty fun. Got my cannons all locked and loaded. Fire. 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 There we go. I don't have great control over it, but it's not that big of a deal. The, the targeting seems to be pretty smart about it, so... You know. I won't complain too much. Do not cease fire. I wonder who, like, I feel like the aesthetic of this game is you're the final survivor of the apocalypse or some shit. So, who's throwing the holy water? Is it magic? Is it magic holy water? Like Santa water? He knows if you've been bad or good. The vampires have been decidedly bad. Although... I'm pretty sure some of these guys aren't vampires. Like, these spinach pools, I don't think they're vampires. Give me crown up. Keep it going. And then, from what I can tell as well, based on the fact that uh, the bat, the blue bat is back, the game seems to kind of loop here. It seems like it's roughly a five minute uh, set, if that makes sense. And then the game loops back around with harder enemies or like higher health bars on the starting enemies, right? Because here's the bats again, and the blue bat is back. Please orbital bombard them. Thank you. Yo, the bat swarm actually pushed a bunch of guys into my hole for my Santa water. Those bats were not naughty. I'm gonna take a little bit of damage here, don't worry. Please fire on the boss. I want my treasure chest. Give me my dopamine. I want the slot machine to play, please. It seems like it's... Oh yeah, that's a, that's a center mass hit. Thousands dead. The casualties are in um, innumerable. I think I'm about to get put in the Thunderdome, right? Or is it ghosts? It's ghosts at four minutes? 
Ah, uh, but it's actually not as big bats at four minutes. My current record, or like my current longest survival is 10 minutes, I believe. I got stuck on something there. I lived about 10 minutes in uh, my first run. And then I usually die around the 8 or so minute mark after that. So, like, I imagine you can get to a point where once you know everything and you get really good at the dodging aspect, you're probably able to go indefinitely. I've heard some people say that there's a win state, but I don't know what it would be. Kill, maybe it's like live 50 minutes or something, maybe it's an hour. Hard to say. I am... I'm not doing research because this is a first impressions video. I'm going for damage up, you can't stop me. Increase my character movement speed? Sure, if I'm a baby, I'm fine. If I just am smart and good and cool at the game, which I am, if you're wondering, I think I'm about to get put in the Thunderdome. Soon, I feel. There's a silver bat. If I'm if I'm just planning well, there's no problem. Oh, also, I'm starting to notice that these are falling in a pattern. They're falling in like a circle around me, it looks like. You see this? So like the next ones are gonna fall top right of me? Yeah, so they're definitely falling in a circular pattern. So you can kinda kinda gauge where you wanna be. So I wanna get down below them if I can. Yeah, for center mass. Okay. That's called pattern recognition, baby. Maybe probably ten minutes I get put. I've been I've been saying I'm gonna get put in the Thunderdome. I know what's gonna happen. I know I'm gonna get put in the Thunderdome. You can't trick me. I'm away. It's probably soon. So you kind of want to move in a sort of circular pattern. I also lost track of the small boss bat that I was trying to kill. Thunderdome time? Yeah, it's Thunderdome time. Hello, Mr. Praying Mantis Man. And your group of spinning fools. This is usually where I drop dead. I feel like this is the first real hurdle where your build is going to thrive or die. And because all the enemies here have a lot of health that you have to get through. I've been firing on these guys for a long time. My magic wand keeps wasting its shots on the flower wall. But I only have to live in the in the Thunderdome for another two seconds, I believe. Oh no, I was incorrect. My belief was incorrect. And definitely like the Thunderdome feels like it's closing in on me. Oh it definitely is. Alright, I'm gonna head out. Legally, you can't keep me here, so I'm just gonna leave. Am I being arrested? For what? You got a warrant for that, Mr. Praying Mantis? Bombards in a circling zone. Oh, that's kinda cool. And then it like deactivates. Oh my god, there's a lot of them. Boys. Gentlemen. It's been an honor. I definitely feel like you need to diversify a little bit more. I think the magic wand is uh, not a great main, and the holy water, uh, it's hard to space, is what I'm finding. But now that I recognize it as a pattern and it's not random, it's become less and less exciting to me. However, that was fun. And there's your, there's your end game stats. 73.6 DPS on the Santa water. I mean, that's going to do it for this video, because I got to go. But I wanted to do a quick one for this game. Definitely check this one out. I think that even if it doesn't look super exciting to you, it's three bucks. So the price, the barrier to entry is very low. Uh, I'd recommend this one. I think that it's hard not to for three dollars. You pop it in for two hours, you get your money's worth. Definitely worth a look. And yeah, I'll do it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.